Hi, this is Stu Turgill, your host for The Phoenix File, a weekly news magazine and community conversation with the people and programs making a positive impact on the quality of life in our community. Radio Phoenix and the Civitan Foundation have teamed up to provide real-world broadcast industry training to adults with physical and developmental disabilities. Working side-by-side with Radio Phoenix instructors, members of the Civitan Foundation's multidisciplinary vocational training and employment center, The Village, produce a weekly internet-based radio program. The joint project hopes to train adults with developmental disabilities for possible employment in radio and television broadcasting. Stay tuned for tonight's edition of The Phoenix File when my guests John Abramson and Victor Arano share the story of this fascinating project. That's coming up next right here on Radio Phoenix, where the Valley comes to talk, sing, connect. I'm Stu Turgill, your host for The Phoenix File. This is a weekly news magazine that features the people and programs making a positive impact on the quality of life in the Valley of the Sun. Now, it's a rare treat to welcome to the studio tonight two outstanding members of the Radio Phoenix family. John Abramson is one of our great on-air hosts, and John can be heard Thursday nights from 11 p.m. to midnight on the Ultimate Infinity Show, which is all about fun rock and roll from every decade. And John also hosts Divergent Sounds on Sunday mornings. And Victor Arano, the godfather and a founder of both Radio Phoenix and our parent organization, the Arizona Community Media Foundation, has been the energy that has helped to make Radio Phoenix such an important media outlet in our community. And as Victor likes to say, Radio Phoenix brings the world to Phoenix and Phoenix to the world. And at Radio Phoenix, we also talk about the radio station as a place where we talk, sing, and connect. Shows like mine are all about the talk. When John is on the air, it's all about the sing with the great music that he plays. But tonight we're going to focus on the way that we connect. And I mean connecting in a very, very special and meaningful way. I asked John and Victor to be here tonight to talk about an extraordinary collaboration between Radio Phoenix and the Civitan Foundation, whose mission is to provide an accessible, safe, and affordable environment while delivering superior life experiences to enhance the quality of life to individuals with developmental disabilities of all ages. The Civitan Radio Project is a very special contribution to the Arizona Community Media Foundation and Radio Phoenix on behalf of a group of adults with disabilities at Civitan Foundation's Village who are being trained in broadcasting. And the Radio Phoenix Civitan Radio Project is our topic for tonight's conversation. So, John Abramson and Victor Aronow, thanks for being here tonight to talk about the Radio Phoenix involvement with Civitan's Radio Project, and welcome to the Phoenix File. Well, Stu, it's very nice to be here. Thank you for inviting us yeah, into thanks, the Stu. studio. Yeah. Okay. Victor, let me start with you. What, what is the Civitan Radio Project, and how and when did it get created? Well, the Civitan organization is fairly old, uh, long-term organization in Phoenix for uh, socialization skills, job training for adults with disabilities. And back in um, July of 2013, they launched a podcasting internet radio program, but they really didn't have the personnel or the equipment to do it in a really effective manner that would let these uh, adults with disabilities get on the air, have their voices heard, get the proper training to use the equipment, and eventually the program sort of faded away. But they contacted us about uh, a year ago, perhaps, and asked us uh, at Radio Phoenix if we would help them get their media program back on its feet and they asked if we had some volunteers who would come over and help them in their, they call it their campus, to set up this radio program, and that's what we did. We sent people over, and John was one of them, that's great. and he's been there since. Are you aware of any other similar programs uh, anywhere else that, uh, that does this sort of work with uh, people with disabilities and training them in, in broadcasting? I am not. I think quite the contrary. A lot of radio 
training programs shy away from adults with disabilities because they say, oh, what's going to happen? They're going to drop a piece of equipment. They're, if they're in a wheelchair, they're going to smash into something or they don't articulate clearly enough and they don't want to spend that kind of time. It's a niche. Yeah. But it's a good niche for people. It's a good niche, and that means that we're in a really unique, uh, leading-edge kind of program here. I think we might be one of the only adults with disability radio pro- training programs in the country. Right. And there are lots of opportunities for these people, not just behind the microphone. They could become involved in the radio field in, in doing other things. Um, Victor, this is not the first time that Radio Phoenix has worked in the educational field when it comes to broadcasting. Our station uh, has had some success with a high school program called Feet on the Street and also the Arts Summer Camp right here in the Phoenix Center for the Arts where our studios are located. Can you briefly describe those programs and uh, how they helped prepare Radio Phoenix to work with the Civitan Radio Project? Well, the Feet on the Street program was actually very interesting and in some ways was... Uh, kind of a, a disappointment to us. The, uh, f- the original idea was to go to the high school media programs and to see if the teachers would be interested in having a group of students go out and do recordings of interviews and with individuals right in their school districts. Not about school necessarily or even at all, but just about the life in their community bring them back to an editorial board and the editorial board would put it together and have perhaps a half hour or one hour local news program from these different school districts around town. It sounded like it would go, the students were very interested in it when I went to talk to the students directly and the school administrators were interested in it. But the teachers were very reluctant to get involved in it because it didn't fit into the curriculum. It wasn't in the state guidelines or whatever else. And it really would have required a lot more work on their part. What we did instead is we had students do um, public service announcements for nonprofit organizations. That's one of the things that we do at Radio Phoenix is we have free public service announcements for nonprofit organizations, and they did practiced voiceovers and putting in music beds, and it was great. So it really was an opportunity for us to sort of dip our toe in the water when it comes to working with with students or young people uh, about uh, the whole process of of how this work is done. Oh, absolutely, and they had no fear. I mean, I used to hear the stuff that they were producing, and I would fall out of my chair laughing <laughs> they were great okay. john let me turn to you now sure. uh, have, have you been involved with teaching others about broadcasting before uh well not like this this is a a, a first time situation for me so uh, so i'm enjoying it it's uh it's i i always enjoyed you know um trying new things and this is a new thing for me so it I is like a new a thing yeah what, what appealed to you about taking on this assignment as a broadcasting instructor with the well, civitan radio project i've worked uh i've worked with the uh, uh challenged in the past and uh, i've enjoyed that and now adding the radio dimension to it uh which is my field uh is uh, it's a nice combination of the things i do that's great and, and we're really grateful to you for uh, for your role in this John, teaching broadcasting to anyone involves both an understanding of the technology mm-hmm. uh, and communications, which I can tell you from personal experience can be challenging for anyone. Right. And I certainly include myself in that. But the students with the Civitan Radio Project, uh, the, the ones with whom you work, are adults with a, a wide array of disabilities, such as autism spectrum disorders, Down syndrome, uh, intellectual disabilities, cerebral palsy. And, and other physical and mental challenges. So mm-hmm. how do you approach teaching something like broadcasting to this group of students? Well, the, the first thing is, is just to get them comfortable in front of the microphone. Uh, and, uh, and we're at that stage now where everyone, uh, now of course there are, there, there are some students who, who just, they, they don't ever want to talk on the radio and I don't, I don't force them, you know. Um, it's, it's up to them, it's their show. Um, but uh, in large part, everyone is now at that stage where, where they are comfortable in front of the microphone, and when they show up, there's something that they want to say. So, uh, so they are pre- prepared uh, 
they have their thoughts organized before they get in front of the mic. So that's really the first step. And then, uh, you know, after that, um, it's easier now than, than it would have been, um, you know, 20, even 10 years ago, because a lot of what we do now, as far as the recording goes, is online. It's, uh, you know, we use the garage band and uh, some of these students, they just uh, download the software at home and they're already using the, the, the recording equipment at home. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a new world. So, um, so they're already horsing around with it in, in their spare time. And then when they get in, uh, it's, it's not some new thing they have to wrap their mind around. So by the time that, uh, that they do get in, they, they're pretty comfortable with it. Yeah. yeah. I want to remind our listeners that one way you can support Radio Phoenix is by becoming one of our sustaining members. For as little as $35 per year, members receive discounts, savings, and other benefits provided by our membership program partners. And don't forget, the membership fee is tax deductible. So for more information or to sign up, you can call 480-829-5746, or you can go online to RadioPhoenix.org, click on the Support tab at the top, and then become a member on the drop-down menu. We thank you for your generous support of community radio. John, um, did you develop a kind of a curriculum that, that is used in teaching this broadcasting course? Well, you know, uh, really, it's, it's kind of um, uh, uh, a situation that has grown on its own um, because at first, you know, there were certain topics that uh, Civitan wanted us to cover each week. And so um, it's kind of evolving with what Civitan has wanted to do. Um, but we're at that stage now where we're, we're, we're kind of seeing uh, what the students want to talk about. Uh, you know, we still have topics that we, that, that we cover, uh, which is good to have, you know, sometimes to focus um, our, our thoughts and get us to think about one thing in particular. Um, but, you know, otherwise, if there's something going on, you know, everyone's involved, like in this play that they're in, we'll talk about that play because you can't get them to focus on some other, you know, um, more uh, topic that's not connected directly with their lives when everyone's all caught up in this play that they all have been working on. So, you know, if, if that's what's on everyone's mind, let's do it. That's the fun thing to talk about. Here at Radio Phoenix, when someone comes along and decides they want to be a volunteer here with a mm -hmm. goal of ultimately having a radio show, we have a very uh, disciplined training and orientation program, as both of you guys know. You've been here a lot longer than I have. Right. Uh, it, it's well laid out and, mm -hmm. and gets people prepared to eventually sit behind the microphone and work all the technology. Are those same elements uh, part of what the training program with Civitan is about? No, it's not. Uh, it's not as formalized as mm -hmm. that because uh, we have a lot of students, and uh, how many do you have? Well, you know, there's like three classes. There's there's one class per hour, and it, it fluctuates. It depends on what's going on, but sometimes there's up to like fifteen or twenty students in the class, and uh, everyone wants their shot to get on the air. So you don't want to take too long, and uh, you know, in explaining things, particularly since you know, as I mentioned. Uh, we we are recording online now using uh, you know uh, uh, software that they're familiar with. They know the GarageBand software, and I can tell them now. Here's where you're editing it, and uh, they know how to edit. You know, I mean, this is something uh, I've discovered that the uh, 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 challenged work very easy on the computer. They're yeah. as good on the computer as anyone. That's that's fabulous. We're going to take a short break and then more of my conversation with John Abramson and Victor Arano about Radio Phoenix's Civitan Radio Project. You're listening to The Phoenix File. I'm Stu Turgill, and this is Radio Phoenix. Welcome back to The Phoenix File. I'm Stu Turgill, and this is The Phoenix File for tonight. My guests are John Abramson and Victor Arano, and now more of our conversation about Radio Phoenix's Civitan Radio Project. Victor, when the project was first conceived, it was really sort of an experiment. And, and so how has it evolved, and, and how has it met your expectations? 
Well, when they first approached us in July, I believe, yeah, it was about a year, year and a half ago. They contacted us. I don't know how they got our name, but they contacted us and said, could we come and help them with their media program? And I had this idea that we could fulfill part of our mission, which is to promote people into the radio sphere. We wanted to train. We take volunteers in off the street, train them not so much to work at the radio station indefinitely, but to try to train them to the level where they can actually go out and start earning a living as station managers, as programmers, as internal office uh, personnel in a station. And I said, well, I don't see any reason why we can't take this group of people working with and around and through their disabilities, find a few here and there who might be able to attain a level where they could actually get a job in the radio industry. And so I put out a call to volunteers in our organization, and uh, John and another volunteer came forward and said, yeah, we'd be interested in working on this. I put them in contact with Civitan and said, all right, you guys go ahead, work out your program, see what you want to do. Our objective from a Radio Phoenix point of view is to put Radio Civitan on the air through Radio Phoenix. We want to give them a program slot every week. So your vision for the future of the Civitan Radio Project is more than just leaving it at the instructional level. You're, tell us about your, your long-term vision for it. Yes, our idea is to have a regular program that we would like to run every week, either as part of our bungalow show or as an independent uh, freestanding program on its own coming out of Civitan where people with these kinds of disabilities could be heard not only in Phoenix but around the world because internet travels around the world and encourage other people who are similarly situated to maybe think a little bit b more broadly about what their own lives are like and what they're capable of. This is, what, this is our mission is to promote people like that. In fact, we're going to have our first test of Civitan Radio. I believe it's going to be on December 2nd. We're going to go on the air for the first time at, uh, I think that's a Saturday. Yeah, it's the Bungalow Show. I just have to check in my calendar. I think calendar. that's 11 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it's 11 o'clock in the morning on December 2nd, which is a Saturday. And we're going to try our first broadcast at that time. And see what happens so the bungalow show which is uh, a, a wonderful saturday morning program here but uh, not only with with good program content but it's also used as sort of a training ground for some of our new hosts new programmers that's going to be where you you do the first launch of, of some of the work from the civitan radio project yes that's what we're going to do we're going to launch radio civitan through Radio Phoenix on that day. So it might turn out that it becomes a, a little vignette as a part of the Bungalow Show or something else on our program schedule, or it could be, as you said, a standalone program. Well, what we're hoping eventually to do is to expand from Civitan to the many organizations, all the great organizations around Phoenix that deal with adults with disabilities and veterans groups and say, look, we have this program and we want to reach out to an audience like you through you through our internet radio service and since it's an internet radio service people can listen to us on their computers and i don't even know what it all is uh, listen i was listening to our station <laughs> in the car on the way down this morning on my smartphone so right, yeah. right. you know we're we're, yep. we're not, uh, j you know, to listen to Radio Phoenix is not like you have to be uh, sitting in front of a, a big desktop computer at home anymore. Yeah. Exactly. We're, we're yep. easily heard on, uh, on, on almost all devices. That is a, a tremendous vision, and I think that speaks to what is so remarkable about community radio, is that we're able to experiment, we're able to, you know, sort of push the limits a little bit, we're able to do some things that clearly you wouldn't see or hear uh, on, on uh, the other radio outlets uh, in our or in any other community. And I just wanted to add that our volunteers like John, for example, uh, these, 
these folks are really on the cutting edge of these expanding vistas and, and experimentation in what you can do for specialized audiences that have traditionally had no voice at all yeah. on on the media. I mean, you don't hear any kinds of programming like this on public radio, on commercial radio, on religious radio, whatever it is. It just doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. And exactly. you don't hear it really uh, anywhere else. As right. you said, it's, we're really on the leading edge here. John, uh, can you tell us a little bit about some of the students that you teach? I'm, I'm sure you must have many interesting stories about these very special students. Uh, is there one or two that you can share with, uh, with us that would uh, give us a paint a little picture of, of who they are? Well, there are rules about what I can and cannot say about our about our students without uh, identifying them by sure. name, of course. Yeah, I, I'm I'm I can tell you that you know um, um, uh, adults with a, with a, uh, challenges. It's it's broad term, as you were saying. There's you know it, it it's it's a broad spectrum that includes uh, a lot of specific types of challenges, and uh, and there is the varying uh, uh, types of of challenges. So. Um, you really can't uh, um, uh, put it in a pigeonhole, right. you know. Um, uh, uh, th there are some who uh, whose capabilities are pretty much the same as as you or I, but they're just working with slower equipment, right. you know. Um, so um, uh, you really can't stereotype them at all. And uh, there's some of them who really uh, just are like when it when it comes to a radio, they're just. They are like uh, a fish in the water. They just take right to it, and they uh, and they have um, uh, kind of a, a a personality for it. That's just they are a natural. That's you know? great. And so they just want to get on the air and start talking. Well, let's hear what it sounds like when they're on the air and talking. I thought our listeners would like to hear just a, a brief clip of several of the Civitan Radio Project students in an episode that was called Heroes. So let me play this clip, and then, John, maybe you can offer some context to, to what sure. we just heard. This is Robert to listen to a Civitan Radio, and hero theme is like my dad is always be my hero for all my Special Olympics and stuff. And thank you for listening to radio. Have a nice day. Army people are our heroes because they help us out, um, bring the food down, and they save our country. This is Doc from Silver Dad Radio. I want to talk about my hero. I brought up the heroes. And I, uh, I've been doing up there, and I, hopefully, by miracle, I can walk again. But, we never know when that's going to be. But, uh, but we will try. And, uh, I will be successfully doing my work, doing everything, doing what I can do, like right here. And I am, uh, have a good day, and I will help everyone. This is Doc from Silver Dead Radio, signing off. Hi, this is Leah, a.k.a. CALQ, and here with Silver Dead Radio today, I'd like to talk about my favorite black rights activist. She's one from the 1950s and 60s, and she was one of the first people to start the black rights movement. Her name is Rosa Parks, and she was the lady who fought for black black people to be able to have the same spots on the bus as the white people. And she was the first woman, despite all of the authorities, to telling her not to do so and telling her to sit back down. She just ignored them and stood straight up and fought for her rights no matter what it took. She fought the authorities, she fought the law, she fought every, anyone in her path. She fought for what she believed in. It didn't matter to her what other people thought. She knew what was right and she fought for it. And I think that's really important because when you've got to stand up for what you believe in. John, uh, that is, that's wonderful. Do you, do you want to say anything about what we just heard or any comments about that? Well, you know, that's just a portion of it and um, that they all had uh, such great thoughts about it. And of course we could only use a portion of it. So um, yeah, there's, 
you just never know um, what the students are going to come up with, um, you know. And of course, in the show, there's a variety of subjects, and they love to talk about lighthearted stuff, like going to the movies as well. So there's a full spectrum. That's great. Let me let me just say, Stu, that one of the one of the uh, programs that I listened to, I think it was called My Favorite Animal. Yeah. Uh, and they talked about elephants, and it was so funny and heartwarming at the same time to listen to them talking about the elephants and the animals that they have in their house and their dog and i mean it was just a great program well i listened to a lot of the clips that uh, that are available uh to to find just one short snippet to to sample for you and uh and they were they were all great if you're listening to this and uh, uh interested in learning more about these students uh, and the work that they're doing, you can go to www.soundcloud.com slash Civitan Radio. Uh, just a few of the clips you can listen to uh, deal with the Civitan Village Celebrates Police Appreciation Week, Civitan Eats Healthy, Dog Week, Whales, Military Week, Sports <laughs> Week. They really do cover the gamut. Uh, John and Victor, thanks for taking on this bold idea and nurturing it into uh, a very meaningful and enjoyable experience for some amazing special needs students at the village. And our thanks, too, to Radio Phoenix and the Arizona Community Media Foundation and the Civitan Foundation for what everyone has done for adults with disabilities who are excited and eager to learn about the world of radio broadcasting. And thanks to you both for being here tonight on The Phoenix File. Well, thanks for inviting us. Yeah, thanks. Well, that's our show for this week. Uh, Thanks again to my guests tonight, John Abramson and Victor Arano. Please join me next Tuesday night at 6.30 when my guest will be Mark Jacoby, President and CEO of Gompers. Until next week, thanks for listening to The Phoenix File. For Radio Phoenix, this is Stu Turgill.